Good afternoon, everybody. Pigskin Pete here. Happy Friday to everybody. Hope everybody had a great week and is looking forward to a uh, longer than shorter weekend, hopefully. So I've been uh, communicating back and forth with Spencer from Rover Sports. I'm sure you, uh, if you subscribe to him, you've seen me on his uh, channel a couple of times. Anybody that knows uh, anything about him, he's a huge Giants fan. Um, and of course, I'm a Carolina Panthers fan. And anybody that's been following the NFL recently knows that not only did the Giants hire former general manager of the Panthers, Dave Gettleman, uh, to take over the front office in New York, they just recently hired Mike Shula, who was the former offensive coordinator for the Panthers for the past what, five years, I think. Um, I'm gonna get on. I'm gonna go on Spencer's channel. Uh, we have a hard time right now with our schedules to you know agree on a time where we, we're both. Uh, free to discuss this. I have a lot of feelings about this. Let's just start with Dave Gettleman, okay? Uh, so Dave Gettleman, it, for anybody that doesn't know his backstory, so the guy's been in the NFL, involved in the NFL since the late 80s, since I think 88 or 89. He spent uh, probably, what, 15 or 20 years as a NFL scout, um, anybody that doesn't know what an NFL scout is, he goes out, uh, evaluates talent to, for the draft. He does have a history with the Giants um, as a scout for them many years ago. Other teams, too, I think the Bills. Anyway, get, got hired as the general manager of the Carolina Panthers. Now, when you make a guy a general manager whose history is being a talent scout um, in the NFL, that's what you expect. That's what you hire him for, right? I mean, that's his background, that's his supposed expertise, is to evaluate great talent and make great draft picks. During uh, Gettleman's time with the Panthers, his draft uh, classes were not very good. He had a couple of really good draft picks uh, for that team in, in his tenure there. Most notably, probably on the defensive side of the ball, K1 Short, uh, Star Latulale, um, Shaq Thompson, those are probably the three best players. Of course, he did last year get uh, Christian McCaffrey. Um, he wasn't responsible for drafting uh, Cam Newton. But, you know, each team gets, what, seven, six or seven rounds, seven picks a year. And to only get three or four good players in his tenure there in the draft, uh, mo the vast majority of the players that he drafted, particularly in the later rounds, you know, rounds three through seven, are either not in the league anymore or just don't, or maybe are on another roster but, or, but don't play. Also, Gettleman's history of uh, free agency is absolutely atrocious. I mean, really bad. Uh, he likes to go out and sign free agents who are at the end of their career and they play there for a year, maybe two at the most, don't produce that much, and he gets rid of them. The Carolina Panthers have been one of the oldest age-wise teams in football for a long time now. And that's Dave Gettleman. Dave Gettleman not only is not a great draft pick person, but he is a terrible free agency guy. So his record as an Italian evaluator is not that good. Now, he has a personality that a lot of people don't like. Uh, he's not a personable guy. Uh, he had, there was a lot of conflict in the Carolina Panthers organization that basically centered around him, his relationships with other front office people, coaches, you name it, owner. Now, to, to really understand about David Gettleman's time at the Panthers, you have to understand the type of owner that Jerry Richardson's been. Now, let's just dismiss all of the, you know, sexual harassment allegations and all of that sort of thing, personal things with Jerry Richardson that's happened this year. Um, that's a whole other issue. As far as a football guy, Jerry Richardson, for anybody that doesn't know, is the only owner, current owner, in the NFL who was also a former player. Um, he hires general managers, coaches, front office people to run his organization. He's one of these people that, that uh, is the opposite of Jerry Jones. He hires people that he trusts to make the right decisions and lets them do their thing. He tries to stay out of it. And that's really um, been a, a good strategy for Jerry Richardson. Uh, I mean, for an expansion team, Carolina Panthers are only just over 20 years old and have had two Super Bowl appearance, uh, appearances, multiple NFC uh, title game appearances, uh, multiple NFC South uh, division titles, and have been a better than average football program uh, since, he's, since uh, Jerry Richardson started that team. 
Now, when Jerry Richardson fires somebody, he is not a guy that fires a lot of people. Uh, coaches stay there for a long time. Front office people stay there for a long time, generally. Uh, but Jerry Richardson fired Gettleman at the beginning, during the season this year, uh, based on his relationships both with coaches and former players and his personality. He's a hard guy to work with, basically. So the, the Giants go and pick him up, okay? Fine. Th now we move on to Mike Shula. So Mike Shula has been the OC since 2013 for the Panthers. Now Cam Newton was already there, uh, and he's been the quarterback's coach for the Panthers. My problem with Mike Shula is not necessarily his development of Cam Newton. Cam Newton is a, a completely different animal when you're talking about a type of quarterback than the NFL has ever seen before. Nobody's ever seen a guy with that physical talent, stature, size, speed, arm strength, uh, ever in the NFL. There's never been a, a quarterback that looks like Cam Newton that's played in the NFL and been successful. So trying to, trying to say whether or not Shula uh, was a good quarterback coach in developing Cam Newton is just too hard to say. Uh, now, I will say that my biggest problem and a lot of Carolina Panthers' problems with Mike Shula has been his play calling. Not that he's a bad play caller, but he's an extremely predictable play caller. Uh, now, I, I watch the Carolina Panthers games at homes most weeks uh, on Sundays. My wife usually sits there and watches it with me. When they get inside the 20-yard line, inside the 30-yard line even, I can sit there and call out what play they're about to run, who's about to get the ball. Is it going to be a Cam Newton design run? Is it going to be a Jonathan Stewart run? Is it going to be a pitch to the corner of the end zone to Kelvin Benjamin? Because they, they're so predictable. I'm not an expert. I've never coached at any high level in football before. If I know what they're going to do, then the other team certainly knows what they're going to do. And that's the most maddening thing. And the other thing with, with Mike Shula is with his play calling doesn't change. They have their, he has his strategy going into a game. Of, of how he's going to call that game based on whatever film he saw or whatever uh, during the, the week. And he sticks with it. It doesn't matter what happens in the first half. He doesn't change anything in the second half. He's extremely predictable. Now, I've been wanting Mike Shula to be fired for years from the Carolina Panthers. Now, I do like continuity in, uh, in, in, a, in an organization. So Cam Newton has had the same head coach and the same offensive coordinator there for the past five years. That's continuity. I mean, you don't see that very often uh, in the NFL. I mean, coaches are always leaving, particularly head coaches, OCs, DCs, uh, quarterbacks get traded. But to have the same head coach, OC, uh, franchise quarterback there uh, for an extended period of time is a good thing. Now, from the Giants' standpoint, okay, so you have Dave Gettleman, um, come in as a GM, and what does he do? He brings his boy, Mike Shula. So it's, it's, it's the Carolina Panthers 2.0. So we have a history here. We have a history of what these two uh, do as far as drafting. We have a history as far as what these do, two do um, in developing their players. Um, so you know what you're going to get if you're a Giants fan. Now, you're going you're gonna to get a team that runs the football a lot and takes shots down the field. That's the Carolina Panthers' MO with Mike Shula. They run the ball 70% of the time, and they take shots down the field. Um, that's what they do. You can look at that as a good thing or a bad thing. Problem is, the, the, uh, the Giants have Eli Manning right now. Now, if you couldn't think of two opposite quarterbacks and their style of play and personality, too, really, then Eli Manning and Cam Newton. So it's going to be extremely interesting to see how Shula works with a quarterback like Eli uh, compared to uh, somebody like Cam Newton. So if I were a Giants fan, I wouldn't be happy about this. And here's the most interesting part of this whole thing, is that you have Pat Shermer uh, as the new head coach of the Giants, and Shula's been a play caller uh, his whole career at the Panthers. Uh, Shermer's going to be, they say that Shermer's going to be calling the plays. Now, how's that going to work out? So they, what they named, they named Mike Shula the, OC and quarterback coach, but he's not going to call the plays. So, I mean, what is Mike Shula's real role going to be, and how is his personality and, and, and style of play going to mesh with somebody like Shermer? I'm not sure this is going to be work out. This is either going to go one of two ways. This is going to be a huge success 
uh, some, some sort of match made in heaven that nobody saw coming, which I don't think is going to happen, or it's going to be a huge bust. Um, we, here's what I don't understand. is So you have a team like the Eagles. This is just a, an example here of what the Giants probably should have done or could have done. Uh, okay, you got Gettleman. Forget, forget about that. Gettleman goes out and gets Shermer. Shermer's an OC slash head coach slash offensive play caller. Now, the Eagles just lost their offensive coordinator to, go, to be the head coach of the Colts. So everyone's like, well, what are the Eagles going to do? Uh, who, who are they going to replace him with? Well, the Eagles basically came out and said they're not going to. I love this move by the Eagles, by the way. I think more teams should do this. Um, Pat Shermer could have been the head coach and offensive coordinator of the Giants. There, what was the reason to bring Mike Shula in there? If you, just, if you want to bring Mike Shula in there and not name him the offensive coordinator and say he's going to be the quarterback coach, that's one thing. But let's be honest. Do you really want Mike Shula being your, your quarterback coach even? I don't. And you're talking to somebody that knows. I don't think he's all he's cracked up to be. Let's be honest. The Carolina Panthers, with the exception of that 2015 season, I think it was, 15 or 16, the year they went to the Super Bowl and lost to the Broncos, Cam Newton won the MVP. With the exception of that year, the Carolina Panthers' offense has been average at best. Okay? Um, they've, what, their success has mainly been predicated on that defense. They've had a top 10, top 5 defense every year for the past eight years. Uh, and that's all Ron Rivera. Okay? That has nothing to do with Mike Shula or Dave Gettleman, quite frankly. So, you know, you can say what you want. Um, I think that this is probably going to end badly. I think you're going to see two or three years of eight wins, nine wins, maybe get to ten wins uh, in that division they're playing in. Um, you know, well, especially against the Eagles, they're going to have a hard time uh, beating them. I think uh, at winning that division uh, with Gettleman and Shula there. So someone's going to eventually go. Question is, who's it going to be? Is it going to be Gettleman to be the first one that's gone? As soon as Gettleman's gone, Shula's going to be gone. Um, is it going to be Shermer? Uh, is Gettleman going to have a stranglehold on that front office and he's going to get rid of Shermer, keep his guy Shula there, maybe, maybe even promote Shula to a head coach? <laughs> That's the other thing. That's the worst case scenario for a Giant fan, that three years from now, Mike Shula is your head coach. Mm -mm. Mike Shula, man, he's, he's, uh, he doesn't impress me at all. Um, I mean, I, not, not at a high-level position. Maybe a positions coach, something like that. Being an OC or a head coach, don't like it. Don't like it at all. So I'll be looking forward to getting on with, uh, with Spencer here soon and giving him my thoughts on this. But coming from a Panther fan, listen, I know. So I, I came across this YouTuber's channel. I don't remember the guy's name. I've never seen his videos before. He's a, he's a YouTuber that makes uh, giant videos. And he, this is as soon as uh, Shula got hired. He came right on and made a video to give his reaction to the whole thing. And there was Carolina Panthers fans commenting in his comment section about, you know, good luck with Shula. You know, we're glad he's gone. And he starts ripping into them saying, oh, well, when you guys were winning all those games, you, uh, you know, you weren't calling for Mike Shula's head. Uh, yeah, they, we were. <laughs> Sorry to tell you, bud. This is not sour grapes. Uh, we're not, like, jealous that Mike Shula went to the Giants. We're not jealous of you. I promise you that. I don't know a single Panthers fan that liked Mike Shula. Not one. You find one, uh, let me know. I don't know any. And, I'm a, and I live in Carolina. So, anyway, I'll be looking forward to getting on with Spencer and talking about this. I got to go. Um, have a great day. Pigskin Pete. Check it out.